Blue Chips, 1994, starring Nick Nolte. Welcome back to Streetball Strategies Basketball Movie Reviews. Blue Chips is the story of Coach Pete Bell, who coaches at Western University. He's a fairly legendary coach. He has two national championships to his game, and he's been fairly successful throughout his career up until now. This is his second consecutive season having a losing record as a head coach. And the movie tells us the reason this is happening is because the other big colleges throughout the country are illegally recruiting the best high school players to come to their colleges and play through illegal recruiting practices and by paying those players off to come play at those colleges. And Coach Bell has never done this because he has dignity and integrity and he's never wanted to pay for players and cheat to win. But with his job and his coaching staff's jobs on the line, and his desperate desire to become a winning coach again, he decides to start illegally recruiting players to come play for his team. So let me describe the first opening scene of this movie to you. The movie opens with Coach Bell screaming at his players in the locker room about how terrible they are. And because of how terrible they are, he currently hates basketball because of them. And when I saw this, I thought to myself, oh man, th this team must have really just gotten their butts kicked in this game. They must have really had a very embarrassing loss in order for him to be screaming at his team like this. No, <laughs> he's, he's screaming at them like this before the game even starts. This is his pre-game speech to his team. And when I saw this, I thought to myself, oh, I get it. This character is based off the real life coach, Bobby Knight. For those of you who are younger and don't know, Bobby Knight was a legendary coach in the 90s at Indiana because he was a very successful coach and he won a national championship. But he was also notable for having a terrible temper and being very aggressive with his teams and his players. And most notably for having temper tantrums on the sidelines of nationally televised college basketball games. When I saw how blatantly Nick Nolte's character was based on Bobby Knight, that immediately took me out of the movie because now I was thinking to myself, oh, somebody scripted and wrote this character for Nick Nolte to play. And from that moment on throughout the movie, the movie constantly feels like it's a scripted narrative, a scripted movie. It doesn't feel natural. It doesn't feel organic. It feels like the writer of the movie had an idea of four or five scenes that would take place in this movie that he really wanted to see take place. And then he decided to write a story and dialogue to get him from scene to scene and and made a movie around those four or five scenes and i realized that that's how most movies are conceived the problem is that in this movie it always feels scripted it doesn't feel natural it doesn't feel organic it doesn't feel like you're watching real events take place in a compelling and interesting way it just constantly feels like you're being scripted to and it's not Nick Nolte's fault. He's perfectly fine in this movie. He's Nick Nolte, he's doing Nick Nolte things, and it's perfectly fine. But you never really get engrossed in the movie. You never really feel like you're watching events unfold. It just feels like you're watching someone's script. My second thought was, oh yeah, not only does and can Hollywood entertain us by telling us compelling stories, but sometimes, if they want to, Hollywood can have an agenda. And this movie clearly does because it's not just giving us the story and the information of here's how college athletic recruitment works. It's also trying to manipulate us to feel the same way about that process that this movie, the filmmakers, obviously feel about the recruitment process. These athletes generate millions of dollars for the university. What do they get? Nothing! What do you get? 
you get a multi-year contract. You get a six-figure shoe deal so your team can be a walking billboard. And that is all legal. And then you get another six figures for that lousy TV show. Get out of my face. We owe them this money. We owe it to them! It's not just saying, here's how the process works. It's not just that the rules that take place are unfair and don't make sense, but because they don't make sense, when you're recruiting players or when you're being recruited, the process is slimy and it is corrupt. And in order to compete within it, you pretty much have to cheat. It's not just giving us that information, but it's clearly almost preaching to us that we should also feel bad and negative about that recruitment process the same way that apparently the filmmakers do. And if filmmakers want to have an agenda and, and make a movie around it, that's completely fine. It's their prerogative, it's their right to do so. But at least if you're going to do that, at least make your movie entertaining, make it compelling, make it so that you feel like you're watching an engrossing story. The problem with this movie is you always feel like you're watching someone's script and you, because of that you never really get lost in the movie. You're always kind of on the outside looking in on this story and because you're not really engrossed, you see the agenda that's taking place, you see that you're trying to be manipulated and when that happens it, it just doesn't feel good. It does, it's not a good movie experience. So let's talk about the basketball in this basketball movie. When you're watching the games, when you're watching the players, it's clear that these players are competent, skilled college players playing competent, high-level college basketball. There's no problem there. The basketball looks the way it's supposed to. And this movie tries to do something that I found interesting, which is before you see the games take place, you see commentators talking to the camera as if you're watching the broadcast of the game and the commentators set up why the game's taking place and why it's important. Once the games are taking place, now the only dialogue we hear is that of the coaches coaching their team. So you see the coaches coaching in the huddle, but you also see them coaching from the sidelines as the games are taking place. That's a cool idea and it could have worked out great and sometimes it does, but the majority of the time it does not. It doesn't work because what the coaches are saying to their players during the games or saying to the referees, like if they're complaining to the referees during the game, what they're saying doesn't always match up to what's actually taking place on the court. So the action we're seeing on the court doesn't match what the coaches are saying on the sidelines or in the huddles or to the referees. Sometimes it does match and when it does it's great and it feels good but the majority of the time what the coaches are saying doesn't actually fit and match what's happening on the court and that makes the basketball games in this movie confusing. What I preferred more than the games in the movie were the actual practice scenes where you see Coach Bell coaching his team in practice because that actually felt real and most of the time what he was coaching was matching what the players were doing on the court and it feels like Nick Nolte was competent as being a coach. So for me the practice scenes are much more believable and thus more entertaining than the basketball games that take place in the movie. More to the point, my favorite scene in the movie in general is a scene where Coach Bell is having a discussion with the athletic director of the university and they're having this discussion in the gymnasium while the athletic director is shooting free throws. And the two of them are clearly friends as well as colleagues and they're discussing what's going on in the current basketball season. And the athletic director is just making free throw after free throw as Nick Nolte rebounds for him. And it appears to be one shot, one take of this discussion, of this one scene. And they're clearly friends as well as colleagues and this scene is probably at least three minutes long and the athletic director makes at least 10 free throws in a row and what's so special about this scene to me is that the athletic director is being played by, portrayed by, 
acted by NBA legend Bob Cousy. He's not playing himself. He's not playing NBA legend Bob Cousy. He's playing the athletic director of this college. And while they're having this discussion, it seems to be one long shot, meaning there was no cuts, there's no edits. There are some close-ups of Nick Nolte during this scene, but I don't think there are any edits during this scene. I think it's just one take throughout this whole three minute scene where Bob Cousy is making free throw after free throw. And Nick Nolte never breaks character, but he does clearly improv at some point during this scene. And he comments about how his friend, this athletic director, a 66 year old man shooting free throws never misses. And then at the end of the scene, when all of the dialogue is done, Bob Cousy has been shooting free throws this whole time with his right hand. Now that the scene has come to its end, he switches the ball to his left hand, shoots a free throw with his left hand, makes it, and <laughs> Nick Nolte finishes the scene by saying, you can't even miss when you shoot left-handed. You can't even miss left-handed. <laughs> it's not a major scene at all in the movie. It's pretty minor, but it's my favorite scene because it's just cool to see Bob Cousy doing this at that age in a movie like this. But to me, it's not really a good look when my favorite scene of the basketball movies where the 66-year-old Bob Cousy's shooting free throws. My second favorite scene comes at the very end of the movie, which is the press conference that Coach Bell has to finish out the movie. The reason that's my second favorite scene is because 90%, 95% of the way through this movie, I was thinking to myself, I don't see how they're going to end this movie in a conclusive and satisfying way, but they end up doing that by having the press conference at the end of the movie that accomplishes all that and does bring the movie sort of full circle. And I didn't expect that, and I'm glad they did it the way they did, but yet and still, you're still getting that agenda, especially in that final scene. And when you're aware of that agenda and feeling like the filmmakers are trying to manipulate you to feel their way about this topic, even though the movie does conclude well, it, it just, it still doesn't feel good that they're doing that to you. So is Blue Chips a good movie? No, but that doesn't inherently mean that it's bad. It has all the flaws that I just told you about, but outside of those flaws, there's nothing egregious about this movie. There's nothing flagrantly bad about this movie, just as there's nothing great about it either. It's just kind of meh. Like everything about the rest of the movie is just the eh. It's just, it doesn't resonate really at all. It's not bad. It's not great. It's just there. And the fact that the basketball games in this movie are confusing because of the coaching commentary that we get during the games, that doesn't help the case for the grade of this movie either. Did the movie accomplish what it was trying to do yeah, it sure it did. It, it, it definitely got across its agenda. It definitely got across that it has a message that the college athletic recruitment process is corruptive. But my question is, who's the audience for this movie? Because if you're a basketball fan and you're watching this movie, you don't really get satisfying basketball because while the action that takes place is good and competent and skillful, because of the coaching commentary that happens during the games, it makes it confusing and thus it takes you out of the movie and, and because of that it's not really satisfying. Other than basketball fans, who's gonna watch this movie? I mean, you'd have to have some kind of connection, direct connection to the athletic recruitment college process in order to want to see this movie if you're not a basketball fan in particular and that seems to be a very narrow audience and if you're just the general public and you're not really into basketball and you don't really care about the recruitment process why would you ever seek this movie out which answers the question of should you see this movie i mean i guess so if you want to have the experience of seeing a story of the athletic recruitment college basketball process which seems to be a very small audience and for everybody else I don't understand why you would seek this movie out unless you're a basketball fan in which case once you see this movie and you see how confusing the basketball scenes are 
ultimately you're going to feel disappointed. Taking all of that into consideration, I give Blue Chips a C-. Thank you guys for watching this review of Blue Chips. If you thought this review was good, please give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button because it really helps me out. Also hit that notification bell so you're notified of the last few movies on this Esquire.com best basketball movie list. I believe Blue Chips was number four and next week's movie will be He Got Game. So make sure you hit that notification bell so you're notified of when that review goes live and I will see you guys in that review. We each champs dog did it right. Trust you wanna play, bring your ball and your nights, let's go!